So what we're going to do, how many people here have sat through one of our focus groups before? A few of you. So the idea here is, <laughs> the idea here is to um, allow you to get a taste of what uh, people in the real world think about digital media because often we're in our own little shells. And so I'll ask these, um, these people a series of questions and then when I'm done, uh, we'll open it up to you guys and then at the very, at the very end, uh, we'll um, have, we'll introduce who are doing some pretty exciting things on their own. Um, so why don't we start, uh, why don't we go left to right, Michael, why don't we start with you? And then, uh, and then we'll go this way. Say who, say who you are, how old you are, and what you do. I'm Michael. I'm 14 years old. I'm a student at New Roads High School. Okay. And where is that? That's in Santa Monica. Okay. All right. I'm Tony. I'm 27. I'm in retail. Okay. Great. What kind of retail? Clothing. Okay. All right. And where do you where where do you live? Pacific Sunwear. I'm sorry. Pacific Sunwear. Okay. Hi, I'm Troy. Uh, I'm self-employed and I'm a bookkeeper. Okay. Uh, my name is Michael. I'm 30. I'm a professional musician. Okay. All right. So let's start talking. Let's start right uh, with the thing I found most interesting. Um, uh, tell me about your MySpace use. Who, who here is a member of MySpace? All of you, okay. Yeah. All right, who here is a member of YouTube? Okay, and, uh, or uses YouTube. Okay, now can you go down the line and give me a sense as to how much time you spend on MySpace and how much time you spend on YouTube? I say I'd spend about half an hour a day on MySpace and about an hour on YouTube. Okay, Tony? Uh, about a half hour on MySpace and two hours on YouTube. Uh, two hours on YouTube, okay. That's about the same for me. I do about 20 minutes on MySpace and at least two hours on YouTube. So at least two hours on YouTube, okay. Yeah, two hours is the minimum. Okay, all right, Tony. Seven days a week? Uh, Would you say, Tony, is that seven days a week? Oh, yes, that's seven days a week. And for you guys, is that also seven days a week? 365. Or it... Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. For me, well, I spend about two hours a day on MySpace and um, about an hour on YouTube, maybe. Okay. Now, here's the fifty thousand dollar question. Here, uh, tell me how much time you guys spend on television. Um, almost none whatsoever. Okay. This is a fourteen year old, by the way. Okay. Yes. Uh, about four hours a day. You spend about four hours a day. Yeah, I don't work that much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was four hours a week. It was four hours a day. Okay, all right. I'd say about four hours a week at the max. Okay. And Michael? I don't, I don't watch TV at all. Okay, you don't watch TV at all. All right, so let's go back to Michael, you over there. Did you used to, uh, did you used to watch more? And if you're not watching as much now, why? Um, well, I'd say it's because I started using the Internet. I used to watch it a lot more before I got into using my computer. Um, well, now that I have TiVo, it's probably less, but it's still about four hours a day. Okay. It would have been like six. Mm -hmm. All right. So has, the, has um, the fact that you have a computer, has that affected your TV usage significantly, would you say? No, because now I can watch TV on the Internet. <laughs> I'm sorry, you watch it on the Internet? That's interesting. How much time do you, would you say you spend watching it on the Internet? Only if my TiVo screws up and it gets full, and then I have to be, you know, go watch whatever show I missed on the internet. I see. Now, would you ever consider just watching a show just for the hell of it on uh, the internet, or is it only when you've missed a show? If, if I'm watching TV on the internet, it's because I need you to watch that it. show. Yeah. Okay. Very good. All right, Troy? Uh, well, it seems most of the TV watching I do is I'm at somebody's house, so it's like a second and third party. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, you watch, so you do watch on the internet as well? Yeah, because uh, my friends, they still watch TV, so it's like if I'm a guest or if I'm company, then it's, I'm, I'm tuned in too. Okay. Now, uh, Michael, do you watch TV on the internet at all? Uh, I watch 
like select shows, like you know, because I don't have TiVo, and I don't like watching TV. I just don't like sitting in the TV room and watching TV because it's just too hard to go through all the channels and figure out what you want to watch. Not much of a commitment. I like to just type it in and go, I want to watch this. Okay. And so that's why YouTube is so much more efficient. Interesting. And I think that's why I don't watch TV anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay. Michael, what about Michael on the left? Um, what about your friends? How much TV do they watch? Um, it varies. Some of them are still really into it. They watch about 10 hours a week. Some of them watch none. Have you noticed a downtrend among your friends in the last Definitely. few years? Uh -huh. Definitely. When and MySpace it, grew in popularity, less people watch TV. Yeah. Now, what about um, your parents and MySpace? Do they have anything to say about that, about how much you can watch? <laughs> they, uh, they're fine with it as long as I don't become an addict. Um, they're fine with me spending half an hour a day. Mm -hmm. Okay. What other sites do you guys spend time? Any other sites, or are those the two? I use iSound. iSound's a site. Okay, what does iSound do? It's like a community for musicians and listeners and things like that. And they kind of have their own like radio streams and things like that. So, okay. Yeah. Troy? AOL Media. Okay. I'm a, a member of Facebook. I'm sorry? Facebook. Facebook. We had a Facebook guy earlier. He'll be happy to hear that. I use AOL. AOL. They'll be happy to hear that too. Okay. How much time would you guys say you spend on uh, AOL and Facebook? Um, probably half an hour, just answering emails. Okay. Mm -hmm. Two minutes a week on Facebook. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's suppose uh, one of these places offered you a premium service. Would you be willing to pay for your internet usage? Why don't we start uh, with you, Michael? Um, no, I wouldn't because I know there are a lot of websites out there you great service, a great internet service for free. So, okay, Tony, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay, and I would Tony? say the same. Okay. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay. What, what was the question? The idea is, would you be willing to pay for a premium service if it offered you something really cool? Like, suppose you could. No. You could, no. Under no sir. <laughs> you can always get it for free. You can always manage to get it for free, and that's the thing. Yeah. Right. So there's. No Suppose I told you you could watch uh, an unlimited amount of movies for no. a certain... No, you wouldn't do it, you wouldn't do it for that. No. Suppose I offered you an unlimited amount of music. Would you do it no. for that? No. Wow, you're tough. You're hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Tony? Yes. What, yes, you would? If you offered me unlimited stuff, yes. Unlimited stuff. What if I only offered you some stuff? Eh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. No. Under no circumstances. I like the free bargain. <laughs> Under no circumstances. Yeah. Okay. Right. And unless Michael? It's some, unless it's something that I really want, then I'm always up for it. Like what? Yeah. What is something you really want? Oh, I don't know. Tickets to the Super Bowl. <laughs> the Super Bowl? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. If you offered me something I couldn't get anywhere else, then I would take that offer. Okay. Yeah, I agree there. All right. Like what? What about a concert? For a concert? I oh, would yeah. definitely pay would for a concert. Pay. Yeah. Okay. Sure. And sporting events, would you pay for that? Yes. So basically things that are timely, you might be willing to consider, right? Okay. Um, well, things now, that are a little bit more special, I think. That's yeah, what... things that are like part of my hobby and my personality. If I like it, I'll definitely will pay You'll for it. You'll definitely pay? Consider it, yeah. Can you, consider other than the it, things yeah. we mentioned, can you think of other things that you'd want, that you would pay money for? Yeah, I can think that of That you can talk about? Yeah. <laughs> well, no. no. <laughs> okay. Anything else? No, yeah. Well, I think that it's just important that if, if you're going to offer somebody something and you ask them to pay for it, for me anyways, when I see things like that and, they, people, and they, it's a great little product or whatever it is, a service or whatever, and it, it, it's a lot of times for me, the reason that I turn it away very quickly is the way it's packaged and the way it's wrapped. And like when, when it's such a hard sell, like when people like really shove something at you, like those pop-ups and things like that, and you look at it for like a second, and you're like, you know what, that's really annoying. It's re I, I have no interest in it simply because it's invading me. Like what would you consider annoying? Well, uh, let's see. 
like I'll, I'll use that uh, website iSound for an mm -hmm. example. Um, I'm, I'm a member there and I sell one of my records on there. And they would get these emails saying, hey, want to become a premium member? And I'm thinking, no. Why would I want to become a premium member when I'm already selling my record on your site? Right. Like what more do I really need, you know? Right. Now what about, what about advertising on sites? Um, do, you, do you guys click on it? And if so, what kind of, what kind of advertising uh, turns you on? Michael? Do, do we? Oh, I was starting with 14-year-old Michael. Um, again, that's a question of what I want. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm not easily drawn in by advertising. If, if I see something that catches my eye that I'm really interested in, I'll follow that up. You'll follow it up by clicking on it. And will you, ha have you bought stuff that you've clicked on? Um, no, I've never done that. Okay. And what kind of stuff interests you? Um, music, electronics. Okay. All right. Tony? I just learned to ignore it. Say it again? I've learned to ignore all the ads and the pop-ups and stuff like that. And I just totally disregard it. Even okay. if I, even if it was something I was interested in, if it popped up and, and annoyed me, I wouldn't click on it. What if it was just embedded in the page? Does that interest you or you just feel like there should be no advertising ever? I just, I just learned to disregard it. You've I, learned to disregard it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Troy? I usually delete them unless it's something that's relative to me that I like. Like mm -hmm. I get a lot of um, pop-ups from realage.com and I keep those. But as far as the junk mail, I just delete it. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I kind of feel like advertising is, is really tough right now because, um, you know, most people don't want things thrown at them or even offered to them because it's, there's such a variety. It's so easy to seek out anything that you want anymore. Right. It's mm -hmm. easy to get anything you want on the internet, anything with just a click, just anything. And all you have to do is Google it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like I almost don't want things thrown at me. I'd rather just go look for them. Okay. Um, search engines. Um, what, what search engine do you use and how often would you say you use it? I use Google and I use it every day. Multiple times, yeah. Okay. Google is the only one I use and okay. 50 times a day probably. Mm -hmm. Okay. The same with me. Google. So everyone's Google? I use Google every day. I use Yahoo also once in a while. <clears throat> okay. Um, do you ever click on the little advertisements on the side or rarely? Never. Mm -hmm. Okay. How about the rest of you? Never. No. Very rarely. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so what about, what about content that you haven't bought? What's your attitude towards it? Either whether that be music or films, do you occasionally uh, take stuff that you haven't bought and, and what do you think about that? Michael? Um, I feel that uh, the internet is really great because of that. I feel very strongly about it. Um, okay, so you don't take anything? Okay. No films, no music, no nothing. Okay. Tony? I pay for everything just because I feel that it's for whoever created it to get some kind of money from it. Unusual group. Okay. Troy? <laughs> the same for me. I, I like to pay, and I think the internet is great. Okay. And what about you? Yeah, I, I like to pay, unless it's offered for free. Right. Well, this is, actually, this is actually the first time this has ever occurred on one of our panels, I have to say. <laughs> In general, what we've discovered is few people, few people like to, uh, to pay and don't feel that they need to. Um, let's talk about uh, cellular for a minute. Uh, which of you guys um, have cellular phones? All of you do? Okay. Uh, do you use it? Um, how many of you use it for something other than voice? Like internet? Uh, really? Yeah. Nothing other than voice? No. I use mine as text messages. And just for text messaging? No, okay. not just. I use it for bad and games and downloading. Okay. How about the rest of you? Texting and internet. Text and the internet? Okay, and what do you do when you're on the internet? Same thing I always do on the internet. Mm -hmm. Porn. <laughs> okay. Is that true? Or are you making a joke? Okay, all right. 
That's why everyone has first name basis here. Okay. Yeah, Michael? Um, I use it for my buddy list, AIM. Mm -hmm. Your buddy list? Okay. Yeah. And do you guys use MySpace? Any of you use MySpace on, on their phone? You do. Mm -hmm. How frequently? Um, when I'm not home, which is 10 hours a day, I usually check once every few hours. Mm -hmm. So um, let's see, did each one of you text message or who here text messages? Raise your hand. I see. Okay. And Michael, do you, are you purely a voice kind of guy? Yeah, I don't, I don't want my phone to besides like ring and be able to speak into it. I can't be, I can't stand it any other way. And um, has your attitude towards using the phone for something other than voice, has that changed over the last year or so? I mean, or how long, how long would you say you've been texting? I've been texting about probably two years. About two and, years? Uh, I, I started just because I realized that instead of having a long, drawn-out conversation that you don't want to deal with, you get to the point in a text, what are you doing tonight or something, you, don't, you, don't, you can avoid that you know, call and beat around the bush for 20 minutes and then ask. You can just you know, get it done in one sentence. Okay. All right. How about you, Michael? Um, my opinion hasn't changed. When I bought my phone, I knew you'd be using it for AIM. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, tell me a bit about your game playing. How much game playing would you say, like uh, video games or computer games? How much would you say you play? I've stopped playing video games almost entirely now on my television, but computer games I play a lot. How much would you say? Uh, an hour and a half a day, maybe. Okay. I don't play games on my phone or TV. Or on your TV. No video games. I'm too busy okay. watching television. <laughs> that, we've discovered that. Okay. I might play about it one hour a week with games on my phone. Okay. Uh-huh. Michael? Uh, I don't play. All right. And what's your uh, platform of choice? Michael, you said computer, right? Okay. Tony? I don't have a You're platform. a TV. You're a TV guy. And Troy? What's the question? Oh, uh, what's your platform of choice if you play games? Oh, it's versatile. It's a, it's a lot of stuff. Okay. It depends on whatever I'm in the mood for. Okay. And Michael, we already know you don't play. Calica or something. Okay. Um, we can open it up a little bit to questions. If you guys have anything you'd like to know. Oh, you, you have a couple questions? All right. Hi. I didn't get to meet everyone. I'm Zahava Stroud. For those who don't know me, Michael's wife and business partner. And um, I'm hearing a lot that from people that I meet that they love YouTube as their preferred form of entertainment. I'd like to hear from you. What do you love about YouTube and what do you find so entertaining about it? Just go to each of you. Me? Yeah, we'll start with you and work around. YouTube. Right what do I like about it? That, um, well, as a musician, I like that you can upload your concerts on there and you can bring them to different sites like MySpace and stuff like that. It helps sell records. Um, I like things. I like just to watch a lot of shows that aren't on TV all the time. Like I said, like I have satellite TV or Dish Network or whatever it is. And I just, I don't, I don't want to go through that 300 channels just to find that there's nothing on. You know, I'd rather just type in a name of a show on YouTube and watch designated, uh, you know, episode that I so, want. So do you have favorite shows that you regularly watch on YouTube? Yeah. All yeah. right. And the person who, um, next, Troy, how about you? Uh, I've been using YouTube for almost about a year now, and what I like about it is that I'm able to go pick up musicians, different artists, but stuff from, the, from way back that wouldn't be played on television. I'm able to go, so it's kind of like a relive the moment for me. That's what I love about it. And next? I just uh, at any given moment, at any time, I could watch whatever I feel like watching. And a lot, of, uh, a lot of shows that aren't in America, a lot of BBC shows I get on there and stuff like that. So you like the fact that you can, it's, you can customize it to what you want to do as opposed right. to being stuck yes. on someone else's schedule? And Michael? Yes. Um, like, like everyone said, um, it's great that you can just sit down and type in what, what you want to see. And also, I, I, I like how they, they have such a wide range of content on there. You can find basically anything. Okay. Do we have any questions from the audience? Mm. This is your chance. Thank you. If you had to choose only, have, only having one media platform, like internet, TV, or mobile phone, what would you choose? Good question. 
I would choose internet without a doubt because you can, you can have everything on the internet now, television, games, even books now. I agree with him because internet is a bigger form where other forms are just individual. You can get everything else on the internet. I would say the internet too, but I also need my phone as well. It's, it's like my B plan. I would say the internet. Everything's on there. Yeah. Hi. If I were to divide usage uh, between creating content and consuming content, what percentage of time would each of you say you spend on either or both? Mm -hmm. What? I couldn't hear the question. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh. You want to repeat it? If I were to divide the usage that you spend on the internet uh, between creating content and consuming content, watching shows and stuff, what percentage of time do you spend on either or both? Like, how much time do you spend uploading, creating content for YouTube or MySpace, and how much time do you spend browsing other people's profiles, watching videos, etc.? Well, I know personally, I, 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 I spend a lot more time creating stuff than I do searching for stuff. I, I'm trying to create things for people to search. So I'm trying to find different ways to do that constantly. For myself, I would spend more time uh, searching than I would uploading. I search. I don't, I don't do any uploading. Or, I'm not very creative. Uh, yeah, I spent the majority of my time consuming. Okay. Uh, curious to know what you watch, I guess I'd, on television would be the only outlet for this, uh, in real time. So what you don't watch on demand, that you change your schedule in order to watch. And depending on your answer, I may have a follow-up. The only shows that I watch, that I have to watch when they're on, are because uh, I'm born and raised in Florida, so I would get a phone call about it, watch it live. Um, because there's a three hour difference, so usually I have to watch uh, Lost and uh, Prison Break when they're on. <laughs> Those are about the only two shows that I need to watch, though. Um, so I couldn't a, hear the reason why. The, uh, the three hour time change in Florida, I get phone calls about it, so I have to watch it that night so I can talk about it that night because I'm a loser. <laughs> okay, and the, and the other guys? Uh, there are no shows I have to watch. I mean, major athletic events, the World Cup or Super Bowl, uh, sometimes yeah. the news, otherwise there's nothing I watch. Yeah, I would say anything that's relative to sports, I have to watch it, but I'm a big fan of Mad TV. I don't know if it comes on regular television anymore, but I'm able to relive that on YouTube. Mm, there's nothing on TV that I watch, so nothing timely or anything. That there's nothing that you find compelling, or, th or just that there's nothing that's worth the inconvenience of the well, fact that on YouTube you can just get it whenever you want as opposed to having to change. Yeah, well, I guess I'm just really not into award shows and big sports shows. So, it, you know what I mean? Those are the two like biggest things I believe that are that come on. That you know, those are those are two things that like big sports shows and big award shows. Those are what really draw people, like in the moment sort of things. Maybe and I don't like either, so. Any more questions? A few more. How important is the quality of the content that you're watching? You know, do you care if it's in surround sound? Do you care if the image quality is really good? I mean, what compels you to want to look at it in a, in a quality platform? Do you, have your, do you have your computers hooked up to really good speakers? That kind of uh, the quality of the content is very important for me, but I mean, I think you'll find that if you go onto YouTube or LimeWire, any website like that, or a service like that, you'll find that there's all the content. They have multiple copies of it with, you know, different resolution, different sound, so you can search to find whatever <coughs> works for you. I uh, stopped being picky as far as content a while back just because if I can find something I really want to see, I'm not picky. Quality is very important for me. Um, I've experienced some audio problems uh, that I didn't like that were unable me to enjoy what I was watching, so that's important. I think quality is, is important on some levels, but if I'm watching a, a videotape of 
one of my favorite bands from like, you know, them playing in a garage or something like that, then I don't care about the quality. It's mm -hmm. about just the essence of what I'm watching. Right. So a lot of times it just, it's, it really, like, but if I'm watching a movie or uh, an episode of a show, it, it should be good quality. So I think it depends on the medium, yeah. what you're watching. Uh, some of you expressed uh, interest in other subjects besides just pure entertainment. Like, um, I think uh, the gentleman on the far left there, you said uh, electronics was another interest of yours. Uh, do you guys find a video or do you use the web for, you know, getting information on things, other interests you have, things, hobbies, uh, technology you might be interested in, educational stuff? Uh, any other kind of information that you go after besides entertainment? Uh, yeah, definitely. I definitely do. Um, since I'm still in school, oftentimes I'll be doing something school-related online, and I'll get sidetracked into just something that catches my eye, or or I'll just hear something that interests me, and I'll Google it. Do, do you find any any video content or or other media besides just print and and pictures that's of interest in these areas? Uh, definitely. On YouTube, for example, after you're finished watching one video, they'll, they'll offer you a series of related ones that are like that, and oftentimes I'll just start clicking and finding new things. Okay. All right, one final question. Uh, would you guys pay extra for better quality, or do you... Because everybody seems to say the quality kind of has uh, an importance to you, depending on what it is you're watching. But if you could get it free and it was crappy, and or you could pay extra and get it better, or pay a little bit more and get it great, what would, what would you do? Uh, I don't think I would pay. I think you can always find quality if you just spend a little more time searching. If I could get decent quality for free and great quality for money, I would definitely take decent for free. Okay. I'd say it'd be uh, half and half for me. Okay. Um, I I guess. I guess I would just say that the quality of things, uh, as, as far as like, if I could get something better and pay for it, then I would probably do it. If it was really high quality and I really wanted the product or I right. really wanted to see something, I would absolutely pay for it. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. okay. And here's one final question that you guys can answer very easily, I think. How many of you guys can stick around and have lunch with us afterwards so we can ask some more questions? I was thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we want to leave just a couple minutes or so for some special kids, uh, but let's give them a hand. Thank you. Um, all right. If you could leave the stage, and we could have the other group go on the stage now. Now we have a group of high school kids for you. These were college and older kids. If you kids could go on the stage, please, and you leave the stage and go down in their seats. Um, I can use this to tell my personal MySpace story. Uh, Michael and I have a 12-year-old and a 14-year-old, and I told this to anyone who's at Music too. but there's a continuum um, of a a new way to use MySpace. My 12-year-old comes to me a few weeks ago and says, Mommy, I'm so excited. I know all about my teacher's sex life. I said, what are you talking about? Teachers aren't supposed to talk about that. She said, well, she has a new teacher right out of school. She overheard her saying she had a MySpace. Well, the teacher has a very unusual first name, and my daughter cleverly went and put in her first name. Sure enough, she gets her sight. So here's a 25-year-old saying things like, oh, I met this cute guy last week. Should I sleep with him? Who Bar hopping this weekend, it has her favorite sports, her favorite teams, her high school, all the things that we're not supposed to know about our teachers. So my daughter is quite clever and she says, Mom, I'm going to use this to my advantage to become the teacher's pet. So I as a parent am faced with a dilemma, an ethical dilemma. Now my daughter didn't do anything wrong, she used public information. I don't want to embarrass the teacher who's a new teacher at this school, I also don't want to impede her relationship. So what I told my daughter is, okay, but you the truth, he can't lie to the teacher. And I actually wanted to see what was going to happen and then figure out what to do or ask you for advice. So my daughter then, next week, the teacher is talking about um, schools and my daughter says, oh, I have a friend from Thousand Oaks. And the teacher says, oh, amazing, I went to Thousand Oaks High School. 
And then my daughter mentions a band, and the teacher says, amazing, that's my favorite band. Well, two weeks later, my daughter is out sick. The teacher writes me an email saying, I miss her so much. She's one of my students. Well, finally, last week, they had to do a project, which is subjective. My daughter did her project. She got an A+. Plus. <laughs> so her strategy worked. Um, she um, now is very close to this teacher. The teacher doesn't know that my daughter reads her MySpace and site and has told all the other students to read her MySpace site. So um, eventually what I decided to do is the teacher's only there for a short term because her teacher's out on leave, is I will privately tell the teacher about this after, the, after she leaves because I didn't want to have my daughter furious at me. But it's one of those things that, of course, nobody ever thought about. Um, and, you know, ethical questions about what teachers should be doing. Um, my other quick story is at my last event, Music 2.0, I was at the after party talking to one of our attendees who's a 30-something. And I normally don't ha hang out at clubs with 30-somethings. And I was mentioning that with MySpace, I said, well, do you really meet real people or is it all virtual friendships? And he said, oh, no, I sleep with girls all the time. It's the bar of the 21st century. I said, well, you mean strangers just go out and sleep with you? He said, oh, no, if we're part of a friend's group, it's like a personal reference. It's the best thing now because I don't have to go out to bars and spend money. I just meet people on MySpace. So I found those interesting as a, as a parent, as an adult, of how it's changing all of our social relationships and what that means to the rest of society. So here we have um, Robert, um, who's standing there, is from what country again? Australia? Ireland. Ireland. Robert is from Ireland. and found us and he's developed this kind of international network of high school kids who want to be in the music oh, industry man. and many of whom um, what I found fascinating we've met some of them were former downloaders who are now downloaders in recovery um, and what he has tried to do is educate them about um, improper or proper uses of file sharing and file swapping and what it means for someone who actually wants to ultimately make money from content generating content so I'd like to start with if each could give us your um, first name, your age, what grade you're in, and, um, and tell us if you were downloading. If so, I remember you in particular were telling us how many hours a day you were downloading, if you still download, and if you stopped, why, and what you downloaded. So why don't we start with, um, Michael, we just had you, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Did, we, did you talk about that already? Uh, what you, if you were downloading? We did okay, so why don't we start with the next person? Uh, my name is Alex. I'm 17 years old. I'm a junior at New Roads High School. Um, and I do download. Um, I would say about half an hour to an hour a day. Um, and the main reason I stopped downloading as much as I did is because I'm a musician and I feel that it's important to support bands that you really like. And although downloading uh, gives them some form of publicity and gets their music out there, um, it is unfair to a lot of musicians to download in large quantities. I'm Siggy, I'm 16, and I'm a Olympic High School, and I don't download. Ah, there we go. Yeah, I'm John. I'm 16. I'm a junior at Olympic as well. Um, I used to do a little downloading myself back in the day, but I gave up that lifestyle, and I I do not download anymore. All right, my name is Chris. I'm 19. I'm a senior at Olympic High School, and uh, yeah, I don't download anymore either. How much you used to download? I used to, yeah. How many hours a day did you used to download? Uh, I don't know, about five, six hours. And what did you used to download five or six hours a day? Anything. Anything? Yeah. <laughs> music, film, video? Uh, just music. Yeah. Hey. My name is Steven. I'm 18. I'm a senior at Olympic High School. And uh, my computer's not good enough to download, so I just go to my friend's house the souped up computer and downloads just about everything that's ever been recorded in history and I just put it on my iPod. So uh, first, um, and then Michael, you're gonna, I don't I, I'd like to find out from each of you, um, how much time a day do you spend on the internet for personal use, not for school use, for anything that you would consider entertainment, leisure, fun, communication with friends, anything like that? And uh, what are your favorite websites you spend on each day? Um, um, I'd spend, i say, about 20 hours or so uh, online for pleasure a week. Um, the service I use the most is probably actually AIM. I spend a lot of time communicating with people. Uh, yeah, I spend about, 
I would estimate two hours online, mainly on YouTube, but uh, also talking to people on AOL and stuff. I spend about two to three hours a day, mostly on MySpace and YouTube. Um, well, before my computer crashed, I'd spend around probably four hours a day on AIM and like just searching stuff, you know, guitar-related stuff. So. Uh, I spend about, when I'm not working, about two to three hours online on AIM, MySpace, or uh, Blabbermouth, you know, reading up on music stuff. Yeah. Okay. On average, in a day, I'll probably spend about an hour and a half on MySpace, and then a little more time on YouTube. Okay. Okay. So why don't you tell us a little bit, um, just to finish this off here, why don't you tell us a little bit about what each one of you has an individual project, right? Uh, you're developing your own music uh, enterprises, right? Which is pretty unusual for kids your age. Why don't you just tell us a little bit about it and um, what it is you do and, and what, if anything, uh, you would expect from the traditional world of entertainment, whether you'd want to, whether you're moving in that direction or whether this is just your own thing. Yeah. Um, well, the program is called Blast Beat. It's an international competition between music companies and schools that Robert has set up. Um, it's to help set up, to help young entrepreneurs set up their companies and also a lot of the proceeds go to charity in Sri Lanka and South Africa. Um, our company at New Roads is called High Music Productions and you can find out more on the web, you know, blastbeat.com or blastspace.com. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a great opportunity. I mean, not only do have the proceeds go to charity and it's doing something for the community and helping out, it's also a wonderful opportunity Musicians. Um, so we have a gig actually coming up April 20th where uh, six high school bands are playing. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. Uh, on behalf of all my peers here, um, the music company that Robert brought to us, it actually helped, well, me personally out because it's the kind of thing where music is something that I really, really enjoy. And if I could do work with that for the rest of my life, it really wouldn't be work. So when he came to our school and was like, oh, music company did it, and I was like, well, I'll give it a chance. And then, like, he wasn't kidding. It's like a music company. We've been working on it for the last past couple of months. Uh, our final product for now is going to be on Saturday at 9 o'clock at the pier. It's going to be a show that we hosted that we set together, a couple of bands from our school, a couple of bands from Venice. And it just really seems like a really great opportunity for me to get some type of experience and somehow snake my way music industry. Okay. Uh, we have flyers if anybody's interested about the event on Saturday. Yeah, yeah Barry's got them right there. Get some. A ton of flyers. The okay. cow man. All right. Ski. Okay. So uh, with that, thank you so much, guys, for, for sharing what you're doing. And let's give them a hand. Thanks for having us. Wow. Thank you. So, and, why do you, and you guys are also welcome to join us for love to have you. Uh, yeah. So we're moving on to lunch at this point, so we'll reconvene in a bit. Zahava, did you have some? Yeah, lunch is at a buffet in the back of the room. Lunch is obviously served in here, so please go get your plates and everything in the back of the room, eat in here. And then the afternoon sessions, one is in here, the other is not the cynic grill because there isn't enough room. We're moving upstairs to the academy room. We'll have people show you how to go upstairs when we start the afternoon sessions, but we'll be in here for a while. Should we get off? Oh, it's the Oscar room upstairs. Word.